Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Even before Adam was created, the Bible says Jesus was the Lamb of God from the foundation of the world. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has reconciled us to God. Because of the blood, our conscience has been cleansed from dead works. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ sets us free from that. For some of us, it could mean lifestyle patterns, sin problems, behavior things that was handed down from generation to generation and now it's part of us. When we testify with our mouth what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us, it puts us into a place of experiential victory.
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you, uh, bringing you God's Word and taking some time also to pray with you. We've been doing our, a series on uh, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus. As we've been exploring the scriptures, trying to understand and discover the power that is there in the blood of Jesus and how we can walk in everything that has been made available to us through the blood that Jesus Christ shed when he died for us on Calvary's cross. As we continue our study in God's Word on the program today, I want to talk about the blood of Jesus as sealing an eternal covenant with God. You know, throughout Scripture, we, we see that the God of the Bible is a God of covenant. He is a covenant-keeping God. And uh, this is revealed to us throughout Scripture. I just want to make mention of a few verses. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, Moses says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. So he says, I want you to know that the Lord your God, He is God, He's a merciful God, He's a faithful God, and He's a God who keeps covenant. Covenant, of course, means a solemn promise, an oath. And God is the God who keeps His covenant. He's the God who keeps His solemn promises, the oaths, the, the words that He speaks. And that's why in Psalm 89 and verse 34, God is saying to the psalmist, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. So God is saying, look, I'm committed to my word. My word is my covenant to you. It's an expression of the solemn promise that I'm making towards you. And I will not break it. I will not go back on uh, the, the covenant that I am making with you. Now, typically, uh, when, when we speak of covenants, uh, it is a solemn promise made by two parties, two individuals, or two groups of people. They come into a covenant, a solemn promise that they make uh, with each other. And uh, the covenant, of course, has responsibilities or duties of which both sides will keep uh, and agree to uh, abide by. We call them the, 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 the terms of the covenant. Uh, a covenant will also have its promises, its, its blessings or its privileges. Um, the covenant will also have what we would call as the consequences, the curses for failing to keep the covenant. And usually a covenant is expressed through words which are spoken or written down. Uh, a covenant uh, will usually have a sign or a token uh, of the covenant which uh, is kept by the parties um, uh, just as a way to remind them of the covenant that has been established. And the covenant usually is ratified. That means it is uh, like a grand uh, opening ceremony or a grand ceremony that uh, sets the covenant in place. Um, the covenant is confirmed, it's endorsed, it's brought into force. Uh, through this ratifying ceremony, if you will. A covenant will have a testator, somebody who initiates, uh, the person who makes the covenant. Uh, the covenant will have mediators, people who enforce the covenant in case uh, there is failure on either side, either party to keep the covenant. Now, a, a covenant could be made by two equal parties or it could be made by a superior with uh, somebody who is lesser uh, in stature by unequal parties as well. For instance, in terms of kings, and subjects, or, 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 or a more powerful king with a less powerful king, and so on. So we see all kinds of uh, uh, parties that engage into, in covenants. Uh, one of the earliest examples of a covenant is the covenant that God made with mankind, with the human race, uh, through Noah, where he said, you know, I will never again destroy uh, uh, mankind through a flood. And as a sign of that covenant, he gave the rain rainbow. He said, that's my sign, my token, or it's a memorial of this covenant. Now, the most powerful kind of covenant is the blood covenant. That means it's a covenant that is made through the shedding of blood. Uh, in fact, in the Bible, uh, the word in, in, in Hebrew, the word covenant simply means to cut a covenant. That means it's, it's referring to a covenant that is made through the shedding of blood. And uh, that's the most powerful type of covenant. Now, why is that most powerful? Because uh, the blood covenant is a covenant that is life for life. 
That means when people enter into a blood covenant, they are saying that I am committing to this covenant with my life. I'm going to back up this covenant with my life. And if I fail to keep this covenant, it's going to cost me my life. That's the significance there of the blood covenant. And so typically, uh, when a blood covenant is ratified or it, it's put into effect, there is uh, an animal that is sacrificed. There is blood that is shed. Sometimes people may just, you know, cut themselves uh, uh, to shed, uh, to let a little blood uh, as a sign of that covenant being established. But the real significance of the blood covenant is that this covenant is backed up by life. That the person or the people engaging in this covenant are giving their entire life for this covenant. This covenant is backed up by blood. And so also when you, you, you know, we see several blood covenants in the Bible, uh, the earliest blood covenant we see is that of the, Abra uh, the Abrahamic covenant where uh, God, uh, after he called Abraham in Genesis 12, in the 15th chapter of Genesis, God sets up a blood covenant with Abraham and God himself passes through the, the, the pieces of the animal that were cut uh, for the shedding of blood, and God passes through. God is saying, I am setting up this covenant. I am the one who's uh, putting this in place. I'm going to back this up. I'm committing to it with my entire being. So that's a, a, a blood covenant that God set up with Abraham, and as a sign of that covenant, he gave circumcision to uh, Abraham and his descendants as a sign, as a token of that covenant, and that would be perpetual. It will be continue on, continued on through generations, but reminding them that they are in a blood covenant with God, which God set up for them. Now, we must keep in mind that the ultimate purpose of every covenant is relationship. God, the reason God set up a blood covenant with Abraham is because he wanted that kind of a relationship with Abraham. And uh, that's why we see later on in Scripture, in the book of James, James chapter 2 and verse 23, that Abraham is called a friend of God. He comes in this place of, of, of being a friend, a covenant, a person in covenant relationship with God. And as we progress to the Old Testament, God gives covenant names uh, uh, to reveal various aspects of his uh, promises, uh, what he's going to keep for the sake of his people in, uh, as part of this covenant. Even the Mosaic Covenant or the Old Covenant that came through Moses was also a covenant that was established through blood, as you see in Exodus 24, uh, verses 7 through 8. So now this brings us to the New Covenant, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus, just before he was uh, about to be crucified, he set in place this New Covenant. And this is what Jesus said uh, as he sat at the Last Supper with his disciples. This is in Luke, the 22nd chapter. I'm reading verses 19 and 20. It says, He took bread, He gave thanks, He broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And so the Lord Jesus is preparing His disciples for this new covenant. And He's saying, this new covenant that I'm setting up is set up with my own blood. Shortly thereafter, the Lord Jesus was crucified on the cross and he shed his blood. But that shedding of his blood put in place or brought into effect a new covenant, a covenant that superseded the Mosaic covenant. And, and he says, this is a covenant that I'm making with you with my own blood. So, Jesus Christ himself is the mediator of this new covenant. He inaugurated it, he ratified it, he fulfilled it, and he permanently established this new covenant. He is the Passover lamb of the new covenant. He is the great high priest of the new covenant representing us before the Father. He is the testator or the covenanting one, the one who himself is making the covenant with you and me the new covenant that he set up with his own blood. He sealed that new covenant by shedding his own blood. And he is the mediator or the enforcer of this new covenant. Now Hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 through 18 says this, And for this reason, he, that is the Lord Jesus, is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. 
For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. So the Apostle Paul is, is talking about the new covenant. He's talking about the need for the blood to be shed in order for that covenant to come into force. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself is a testator. He's the one who uh, is a covenanting one. He's the one who brings his covenant into place. And then he offers his own life and he sheds his own blood to set that covenant into effect. And, 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 that, and he is now also the mediator or the enforcer of that new covenant. So this new covenant is a covenant of grace in contrast to the covenant uh, that came through Moses. Uh, the covenant that came through Moses was a covenant of law. You had to do this and you had to do that. And it gave no power to the people to live by the terms of the covenant. So by default, they fell short of the covenant. But this new covenant which Jesus Christ put in place with his own blood, which you and I now enter into a covenant relationship with God. Now, that's very powerful uh, just to think about that. That through Jesus Christ, you and I enter into a covenant relationship with God. With God on one side where he says he, God will never, never, never fail his side of the covenant. And you and I have come into that kind of a relationship. And there are, of course, there are the blessings of this covenant uh, that God has, has promised for us. Uh, everything that he is, he gives to us in that covenant. All who he is, he is the healer, he is the deliverer, he is the provider, he is the redeemer, he is the righteousness of his people, he is the, uh, uh, the one who is always present for his people. All that he is through his covenant names, he gives to us through the covenant that he has set up uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we on our side are invited to walk in this covenant. But what we must understand is this, that this covenant that we have with, the Lord, with God, the new covenant, is a covenant of grace in contrast to the covenant of law. So under the covenant of grace, it is God himself who empowers us to live by that covenant. He writes his word on our hearts. He puts his sign or token of the covenant in our hearts. He circumcises our hearts. He writes his law in our hearts and in our minds. And then he himself gives us the Holy Spirit, enabling us to walk in the power of this covenant. Uh, that's why when Paul talks about this covenant in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, he tells, it tells us it's a more glorious covenant. He says this is a covenant that has greater glory, greater expressions of God, and a greater uh, experience of God than the old covenant. Or in, in Hebrews 8 and verse 6, uh, the writer of Hebrews says, this, is, this new covenant is a better covenant and it is based on better promises. A few more things that I want us, want us to say about this new covenant that Jesus uh, established. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Uh, it tells us that the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will. So here it calls this new covenant as an everlasting. It's an eternal covenant. This covenant will not be in any way annulled. It's a relationship that God has entered into with those who have been washed in the blood, those who have been uh, sanctified by the blood, those who have come under the blood of Jesus Christ. God has entered into an everlasting covenant with his people. And he is at work in us, making us complete uh, to be able to do every good work, to do his will. So he empowers us to walk in this covenant. The last thing I want to bring our attention to about the new covenant is this, that the blood of this covenant speaks. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24, the writer of Hebrews says that we've come to Jesus, who is the mediator of this new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So he says, look, we've come into this covenant with, with God through Jesus Christ. And, and he says that we, we, we have received the blood of sprinkling. So he's referring to the Old Testament where when they put a covenant in place, they would sprinkle the blood. Like we see in the 24th chapter of the book of Exodus, after Moses read the law, the words of the covenant, it says he took the blood and he sprinkled it upon the people. And he said, now God has made a blood covenant with you according to these words. 
So he's referring to that. And now we, as New Testament, New Covenant believers, we have come into an everlasting covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus has been sprinkled upon us. That means we are now in a blood covenant with God. And then he says in this verse, verse 24 of Hebrews 12, that this blood speaks better things than that of Abel. So now he's referring to what happened there in Genesis 4 and verse 10. When Abel was killed, the Bible says the blood, his blood cried out to God. And God said, I hear the cry of Abel's blood. And I've come in response to that. It's crying out for vengeance. But now the writer of Hebrews says that this blood of, the, of Christ that we have been sprinkled with, it speaks of much better things. The blood is, is, is speaking, it's expressing, it's, it's, it's announcing something to the realm of the Spirit that God himself he hears, and of course, every demonic power also hears. The point is this, that when we come into a covenant with God, we are sprinkled with the blood of Jesus, and that blood upon us as, as covenant people, as blood covenant with, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood upon our lives speaks, that blood upon our lives announces that we are in covenant with God, and we therefore are blessed with the much better things, greater things, that God has promised than those under the old covenant, than under, under the old, old Mosaic law. This blood speaks of better things. This blood is talking about mercy. This blood announces that we are forgiven. This blood upon our lives announces that we've been justified. This blood that we've been sprinkled with talks about the fact that we are redeemed from every work of darkness and every power of the evil one. So here's what I want us to understand that the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful that when you and I embrace what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, that through his shed blood, we are in covenant with Almighty God. We are in a relationship with Almighty God, a covenant that he will not break from his side, a covenant that brings his blessings upon our lives, and his blood upon our lives announces that we are covenant people. And there are blessings that you and I can walk in. What we're going to do in the weeks to come is we're going to just try to summarize some of the blessings that are made available to us because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we also want to learn how to walk in and experience what the blood of Jesus Christ has made available to us. What we've seen today on the program is that we have come into a solemn covenant in a, in a relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's an everlasting covenant, and it's a covenant where the blood announces everything that God has promised for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today, and we trust that this message uh, that, that, re that it reveals to us the eternal covenant that God has for us which he has made available to us through the blood of Jesus Christ, and which he says is a covenant that is eternal. It's a covenant that he will not break. It's a covenant that makes the blessings of God available to us, that it will encourage your heart to know that you are, as a believer, in such a covenant with God. God will never break his side. He's committed to his relationship with you. And you and I can walk in the fullness of the blessings of the new covenant brought into place through the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. And as I pray, I'm going to ask the Lord that by the power of His Holy Spirit, He would release the blessings of this covenant upon your life, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether you need to be set free from something in your life, whether you need God's miracle provision to meet some need. All of this is given to us in the new covenant. And I want to pray this blessing over, over your life. And I want you to agree with me, believe God with me, that these things are going to take place for you. Let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, because of the shed blood of Christ, and because of the new covenant that is in His blood given to us, I pray for every person listening, and by the power of that blood, I break every yoke of darkness. I break and destroy and annul every evil work of sickness, disease, torment, oppression, 
and I release healing. I release wholeness. And God, I also release your divine provision into the lives of people that your abundant supply come into their lives. And God, I pray your peace, your total well-being into their lives, a healing upon their relationships, a healing upon, Lord, their, uh, their, everything concerning them. I release shalom upon them because this is made available to us as part of the new covenant. I release this, release this blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for making this good in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. 